Hi, I'm Benjamin Altshuler, and I'm here in Princeton, New Jersey, as part of the Classics Conclave, American Philological Association Oral History Project. Today I'm speaking with Peter R. L. Brown, the Philip and Belua Rowlands Professor of History Emeritus at Princeton. Professor Brown's first book, Augustine of Hippo, established Professor Brown as a brilliant scholar. He established the concept of late antiquity, and he brought new life and understanding to the study of the 3rd to 9th centuries. Professor Brown has been honored with innumerable fellowships and honorary degrees. A scholar beyond easy measure, his research has benefited from his ability to read 15 languages. Professor Brown, for my first question, when did you first start learning Latin? I started learning Latin far too young. I learned it at the age of seven. I was taught by a cousin of W. B. B. Yeats in my Irish prep school, and as he, this was during the war, and as it was a Protestant prep school, we went out of our way to have a meat Irish stew every Friday, and he, who was a, a poet in his own right, would come on Friday to attempt to teach the young Latin, which he wasn't very good at. So, so that was that was my beginning. I think that actually is the the way it often happened in an English Irish background. Latin was one of the first f foreign languages you did. You did it bef before French. You did it in fear and trembling. It wasn't much fun, quite frankly, and it was really only in 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 uh, the, uh, the Oxford, where with the modern history exam there was a very good what one would call special subject, which was worked on basically set texts, you know, mm -hmm. the really good ones like Augustine's Confessions, but also Augustine's correspondence. Um, where then I actually really found that Augustine's Latin was clearer than any of the rather ye olde uh, Victorian translations. So I guess my conversion moment to Latin was when I found I was reading the Latin side of the Low Ebb Library rather than the English side. There's some people who study history of classical times without ever looking at the actual texts. What do you think you gain from reading the sources in their the language they were written rather than a translation? I have always found that unless you read the original, you don't get the rhythm of a thought. You don't really get the rhythm. And in a I think this is particularly true in both Greek and Latin because they're both very rhetorical languages. Mm -hmm. People write so as to persuade. Mm -hmm. They don't write to record, they really write so as to persuade. Mm -hmm. And to read something like Augustine's City of God, mm -hmm. which are all Augustine's Confessions, particularly, particularly the City of God, which are in the Ciceronian manner each book is a great long speech, such mm -hmm. as Cicero himself would have been proud to have delivered. He, Augustine's doing it in his study, Cicero's doing it in the Roman Senate, but they're both doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And unless you get the rhythm of persuasion, mm -hmm. you lose something. Okay. You, you can tell anyone what the guy thought, but how he made, how he came to think it, and how he tried to make you think it. Mm -hmm. That's a, the other thing which I think is absolutely crucial is the weight of words. Mm -hmm. This again is for a historian. You can't, un I found this when I learned um, Hebrew particularly, that certain basic concepts are just in the words. Mm -hmm. And no matter how accurate the translation may be, you don't get the weight. You don't get the weight. When you're teaching a tutorial or you're doing a lecture, how do you like to bring the material alive for students? Well, I think first of all, it's to emphasize the non-familiarity. 
Then also I certainly find sometimes you emphasize those bits of the past which you never realized were in the past, they were, were, were there. And there I, think, there I think words are important, mm -hmm. just to remind people of how many important modern concepts are Latin and Greek. And this is not just technical words, it's deep, deep down mm -hmm. legacies of, as it were, heavy words. So mm -hmm. I, I very much give them a sort of heavy word account and make them realize that an enormous amount of the world is influenced still by this. And I'm a great believer in the slideshows. Mm -hmm. I mean, long before there was PowerPoint, I would build up my carousel, and every journey I took, I would take slide film. And I tell you why, it is t two things. First of all, you know, these guys don't know what a Roman arch looks like, or they don't know what North Africa looks like. It doesn't look like the state of Massachusetts, it really doesn't. Um, so you, you, you get them into a real, a real concrete, concrete landscape. Mm -hmm. The other reason I do it is that, of course, these are societies of very low li 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 literacy, mm -hmm. so that, in fact, monuments, visual things, mm -hmm. the legends on coins, mm -hmm. coins that will show, you know, um, the imperial virtues or emperors mm -hmm. stomping on barbarians or something like this. They are the equivalent of modern broadcasting stations. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to make you realize that these are considerably more visual cultures than, mm -hmm. than our own in some ways. At least uh, ours has become an extremely visual culture again, mm -hmm. but um, that was what the ancient world always was like, you really say it in stone.